Traveling the globe in search of the world's great religious stories. Up in the yard, so much to see. A journey of discovery. Hmm. Let me see now. Where's London? Lincoln, Luton. Oh, come on, where have you put it? Put what? My new mobile phone. I have not got your mobile phone. Get out the You're always ferreting in my drawers. Ferreting? Oh, I have never been so insulted in all my life. <sighs> there, I found it. Oh, hooray! Al's found me phone. No, no, no. I found London on my map. <sighs> We've been twice around the world and we still haven't collected a story from this country. I could tell you some stories about London. What with me being a cockney. What's a cockney winner to do? A cockney is somebody who is born within the sound of bow bells. Hmm. Talking of bells, where's that ringing coming from? Sounds like my mobile phone. And it's coming from that filing cabinet over there. So that's where I left it. Hello, man. I love you. Oh, it's not me, ma'am. How embarrassing. It's for Anwar. Oh, uh, what's all the shouting? Can't a cat have a nap before a long journey? It's the phone. It's for you. Thank you. It's probably my tailor. Hmm? What? My safari suit isn't ready. No, I need it now. I'm travelling to the tropics on an important mission. Anwar, would you please get off that phone? We've masses to do before we leave. <laughs> Sorry, Captain. I want this to be an efficient tour with no doubling back. Oh, right. I forgot my toothbrush. Can I just leave home and get it, please? It's OK. <coughs> I bought a spare one for you, Rat. Ramona is now officially in charge of provisions. By the way, who put that mobile in the filing cabinet? All right, it was me. It was me. Hello? <gasps> it's me, ma'am. Yes, yes, I've got plenty of clean undies. And a toothbrush. Yeah. Oh, we're leaving in a minute. OK. Um, she wants me to say goodbye to my relatives. Oh. I won't be a mo. <sighs> goodbye, Cousin Amelia. Goodbye, Uncle Joe. Goodbye, Cousins Katie Lily. I'll see you soon, Uncle Roger. <sighs> yeah. How many relatives has she got? I'm sorry. I've got to go now. Say goodbye to Mary and the triplets for me. I'm sorry about that, Al. Only there's 320 of us in my family. No, make that 321. That's nothing. There's 420 in mine. Get away. Straight up. I'll prove it. Pass the phone. No, no way. If you ring that little top, you'll melt me thin. Oh, go on. I was only kidding about having 420 relatives. Yeah, I thought so. I've only got 419, really. You're always boasting, you are. Oh, ignore him, Ramona. Once a booster... Always a booster. Rat will never change. Don't be so sure about that. Journeys have been known to change people in all sorts of ways. If any luck, it'll improve your cooking. <laughs> and your manners. I shall change my mind about this whole trip if you don't stop arguing. Rat, pull up the anchor. Anwar, hmm? give me a hand with the luggage. Uh, Bye, Captain. Yes, Captain. <sighs> now, I hope nobody has forgotten anything. Or I won't be very pleased. Which silly fool forgot to bring fuel? Ah, that would be this silly fool. I was so busy planning the route, oh, I clean forgot. Oh, don't worry, Captain. <laughs> Here, I remember to bring the fuel. Ah, right. Excellent. Well done, Ramona. Do you know, that's why you're in charge of provisions. Whatever would I do without you? <laughs> right, London, here we come. Jay, journey, D destination, London. <laughs> Captain, I can see the stone lions in Trafalgar Square. <gasps> Those aren't stone lions, Rat. They're real lions. Thank Don't stop there. It's London Zoo. We'll be eaten alive. <laughs> oh, where shall I stop, Captain? Uh, uh, just drop anchor over at St Paul's Cathedral. Mind the windows, Rat. Hey, Rat, Al, are we there yet? Amazingly enough, we are. Despite the death-defying tour around the lion enclosure, we are now in the heart of London. 
Release scope, rat. Aye, aye, Captain. Ian Amwa, come and see this. We're in London. Are you ready, scope? <laughs> Three, two, one. Yes! <laughs> What a massive church. That's St Paul's Cathedral. It does look very old. Oh, it is. Built 300 years ago by a famous architect called Christopher Wren. Is that him up there, then? No, that'll be St Paul. Lots of tourists and visitors come from all over the world to visit St Paul's, don't they? It's a very impressive building. Scope, can you find St Paul anywhere else? Hang on. Is he in that sculpture? Can you get a bit closer? No, 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 not further away. Back to where you were. There he is. This is where he first saw the light. Can you see the rays of light? Well, Paul's in the middle. Scope, go and look inside. There's bound to be lots more pictures of St Paul in the cathedral. Don't be careful, Scope. It's a bit busy, isn't it? Why are all those people hanging around outside? They're queuing. They're definitely waiting for something. Oh, well, maybe it's closed. What does that sign say, Captain? Would you believe it? It is closed to visitors. Oh, well, next time. We can't afford to hang around now. There's lots to get on with. Eh? We found a story about Paul on one of our other trips. Wasn't he the one who changed his name, Captain? That's right. He wasn't called Paul at first. He was called Saul. He was Jewish, and he loved going to the synagogue with his family and listening to the teachings of his rabbi. Oh, I remember now. He came from Texas, didn't he? Actually... It was Tarsus. Oh, I knew it began with a T. Uh, what's the synagogue again? It's where Jewish people go to worship God. That's right. Whereas somewhere like St Paul's is where Christians go to worship. Saul hated Christians, especially Jesus. Why? What had Jesus ever done to upset Saul? Saul thought Jesus was a rebel and might try and destroy all the things he loved. And Saul went on a journey, didn't he? Um, where did he go now? Oh, I know. Damestos. It was Damascus. Ah, oh, Damestos, Damascus. It's all the same old story. It's in your catalogue, isn't it, Anwar? Oh, yes. Uh, shall I go and get it? Yeah, that'll be grand. We'll meet you in the story area. <laughs> the Road to Damascus, starring Jesus Christ and Saul, also known as Paul. On his way to Damascus, Saul hated Christians so much, he planned to arrest them and take them back to Jerusalem as prisoners. Boo! To Saul! He wasn't really a baddie rat. Do you not remember what happened next? Uh... He had a vision. Saul saw the light. He believed he heard and saw Jesus. It blew his mind. He went blind for three days, but it did his soul the world of good. Saul saw that he'd been wrong about Jesus. The journey to Damascus changed him forever. He even changed his name to Paul and became one of the most famous Christians in the world. Ah, oh, yes. He was a great traveller. Jesus travelled a lot too, didn't he? Only he always took his bicycles with him. Jesus didn't have a bicycle. Yeah, he did. In the Bible, it says Jesus had loads of bicycles. Done it, Captain. I think you'll find it says he had loads of disciples, Rat. Not bicycles. <laughs> what? It's an easy mistake to make. I've got my B's and my D's muddled up, that's all. Never mind, Rat. You are quite right about Jesus being a traveller. He didn't travel quite as far as Paul, but we've collected a few stories about him going to Jerusalem, haven't we? Oh, yes. They're all safe in my catalogue. <gasps> Good heavens, is that the time already? <gasps> chop, chop. I need you to navigate the Ark to Jerusalem, Rat. How can we know all this stuff about Paul, Captain? He had a close friend called Luke who wrote it all down in a travelogue. Mum? Hello, it's me. Hey, we're going to Jerusalem. Why? Well, how do I know why? Jesus went there. He travelled from Nazareth with his parents when he was 12. Did you hear that, Mum? Yeah, Jesus went there with his mum and dad, Mary and Joseph. So we're going to see what it's like. <laughs> Oh, there's Jerusalem down there, Captain. Ah, so it is. Drop the anchor, Rat. Aye, aye, Captain. And release scope, please, Rat. Three, two, one. Launch! Scope launched, Captain. Ah, the holy city of Jerusalem. Oh, I remember coming here on our last trip. 
Hey, Scope, can you land and get a closer look inside the city walls? No, go through that gate, Scope. It will take you into Jerusalem. Where's that girl going? Scope, follow her! I reckon she's going to explore the old streets and shops. Oh, where's she gone? Oh, look at all those people dressed up. I wonder where they're going. The men look like they're going one way and the girls another. I thought so. They're at the Wailing Wall. Yes, I remember. Lots of Jewish people come here to pray. Men on one side, women another. But what's so special about the wall? It's all that's left of the huge temple that stood here at the time of Jesus. Eh? Is that paper in those cracks? Oh, it certainly is. People have written messages and prayers on them to God. Does he read them? Oh, I don't know about that, Rat. But this is certainly a special place where lots of Jewish people come to pray. It's a shame the wall's the only bit of the temple left. Ah, but it's still a holy place. Jewish people visit whenever they can, especially for Passover. Oh, what is Passover? Passover is the festival that reminds Jewish people about the terrible night when all the eldest sons of the Egyptians died. Jewish people call this festival Pesach. Not everybody died, though, did they? No. The Israelite families escaped and set out on a journey to find their own land. Ah, there's something coming through on the extrasensory printer. Oh, it's about Jesus in the temple at Jerusalem. Great! I really like that story. Isn't that the one where he gets told off by his mum and dad for not saying where he was going? Mm, yeah, that's it. It's a pity he didn't have a mobile, you know, then he could have told him where he was. Hmm. Mm. Shall I read it, or would someone else like to do the honours? I'll do it! I'm the best reader! Oh, uh, rats boasting again. Journeys are supposed to change people, but he's still boasting. I'm not! I'll say I'm not! I'll say I'm not! I'll say I'm not! If you're going to argue, I'll read it. Sorry, Sorry Captain. Captain. Now, I'll begin. Jesus travelled to Jerusalem with lots of his relatives and friends. Oh, I'll bet I've got more relatives than he had. There's Uncle Stephen, Auntie Debbie, Cousin Richard... He's doing it again! I do not want to hear another squeak out of you until after the story. <laughs> when all the celebrations were over and it was time to go home, Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents travelled for a whole day assuming he was with others in the group, but they had lost him. I got lost in a supermarket once, you know. Me nan went berserk! Jesus' parents were very worried. They hadn't a clue where he was. So did he ever turn up? Yes, Anwar. They found him in the temple, sitting among the scholars, listening and asking questions. Everyone was amazed at his knowledge and understanding. Oh, yeah, but he still got told off, though. I was told off once, you know. I he caused his parents a lot of worry, Rat, and he put them two days behind the others. Did he say sorry? Not exactly. He gave them a very strange explanation. Why were you looking for me, he said. Didn't you know that this temple is my father's house and I had to be here? What did he mean? Mm -hmm. I thought Joseph was his dad. Mm -hmm. Ah, nobody understood at first. The temple wasn't Joseph's house. He lived in Nazareth. It was only later that they realised Jesus was telling them that his real father was God. That journey to Jerusalem was a reminder that Jesus was no ordinary boy. He was someone who could change the lives of those around him wherever he went. So what'd he do? Where'd he go? Well, remember that time on our last journey, we collected stories about the things Jesus did on his travels. He used to cure people, didn't he, when they were poorly? Oh, he was a great healer. Sometimes he was so busy healing, he hardly had time to eat. Oh, he must have been worn out, poor chap. Oh, he got very tired sometimes. It happened once when he was in a town called Sychar. <gasps> oh, is that a new church being built? Actually, I think it's an old one being rebuilt. Oh, how nice they're not letting it fall down. I wonder what it's like inside. Who's he? What's he saying? Oh, he's a priest. I expect he's reading from the Bible. And what's that? It's an old well. Well, well. Hang on a minute. I thought wells were meant to be on the outside, not in a church with crosses and candles and a priest. This is a holy well. Once Jesus stopped here for a drink of water. Wow, Jesus has been here. That looks deep. Hmm, and I bet you wouldn't want to fall down there, Rat. No, I wouldn't, thank you very much, Anwar. Anyway, Jesus met a woman here, but... What I can't remember is what happened next. Oh, that'll be old age. Plays havoc with your memory. I remember it's called Jacob's Well because Jacob... Um, was that Joseph and his many coloured coats, Dad? Jacob? 
Yes, Sanwar. Ah. Jacob bought it and the land around it. But in those days, it was called Shechem. Anyway, Jesus met a woman here. Oh, would you like me to see if I can find out about Jesus at the well, Captain? Would you, Ramona? Yes. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, you need to pick up some supplies while you're there. Perhaps you could ask one of the locals if they know the story. Oh, yeah, OK. Uh, does anybody want anything from the shops while I'm there? Uh, oh. Can I have a beta deltoid Mark II games console, please? No. no. Oh. I'm starving. I hope Ramona isn't going to be much longer. And where Ramona's too busy to make lunch today. You do it for a change. It'll be a lovely surprise for her. Me? But, but, but I can't. Oh, come on, I'll give you a hand. What shall we make? Rat a tui. <laughs> everything. Oh, yes, and I got my story. Hey, do I have time to read it before I cook the lunch? Don't you worry about lunch. Let's all go into the story room and make ourselves comfortable. Come on. <laughs> right, everyone ready? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus and the woman at the well. On their way to Galilee, Jesus and his friends had to go through Samaria Jesus was tired, so he sent his friends to buy lunch while he sat near a well called Jacob's Well. Just then, a Samaritan woman came to fetch water from the well. Jesus asked her for a drink. Well, she was shocked because he was Jewish and Samaritans and Jews didn't get on. Why not? I expect there had been some quarrel over religion. No, oh, it's often the way. Jesus had no time for quarrels, though. He spoke to everyone. He told the woman that if she knew who he was, she should have asked him for a drink and he'd have given her living water. Living water? What's that? Well, she didn't know either. Jesus is like that. You had to think about his words carefully before you understood them sometimes. Jesus wanted the Samaritan lady to understand. He told her that he could give her something that would change her life, but first she had to do something. Jesus said that all she had to do was go home and bring her husband with her. But I don't have a husband, she said. Then Jesus told her she'd been married five times and was no longer living with her husband. The woman was amazed that he knew so much about her and realised that he was a man of God. Then she reminded him that the Jews said God could only be properly worshipped in Jerusalem. Yeah, but Jesus said that that was stuff and nonsense, didn't he, Captain? He said the important thing was not where you worshipped, but how you worshipped. God was interested in our hearts, not in our nationalities. Then... Jesus told her that he was God's chosen leader and the Samaritan rushed into town to tell everyone the good news. She said that her life would never be the same again. Hey, what's that lovely smell? I can't smell anything. Can you, Anwar? Uh, no. Um, well, excuse us. Uh, there's something we need to do in the galley. Like what? Oh, this and that. Uh, see you in a mo. <laughs> Oh, my! Luncheon is served. Ta-da! Oh, Anwar, you've cooked lunch? Well, rat helped. Me? Nah, cooking's a cat's job. <gasps> mm, mm. That was delicious, Anwar. Do you know something? It's really going to change my life to have some help in the kitchen. Well, actually, it's Rat you should be thanking. He's a brilliant cook. Oh, no. Any old twit can knock up a ratatouille. Well, you're far too modest, old boy. Well, well, Lanwer. Only this morning you were saying that Rat boasted too much and would never change. 
I think that proves something. It proves I'm best at being modest. <laughs> All right. Change your breakfast, change your lunch. It's no big deal at all. Change your outlook, change your life. There's changes big and small. Change direction, change your course. Let's go east, not west. Every day we've heard folks say a change is as good as a rest. There's none so blind as cannot see. St Paul knew that for sure. All life gets like a joke you've heard a thousand times before. So don't get bogged down in your ways With just your point of view It's not too late to change your mind Change is good for you Change your toothpaste, change your pen It's no big deal at all Change your lifestyle, change your house There's changes big and small Change your ways, change someone's life You know it's for the best Every day we've heard folks say A change is as good as a rest So, you see, we all have the power to change other people's lives we may not perform miracles, but a kind word or a helping hand goes a long, long way. So, how about a hand with the washing up, then? Oh, yeah, that could be fast. Yeah, it is, yes, yes, yes. Well, it is a miracle. Oh, great. My paws have gone all wrinkly doing the washing up. Still, it made a nice change for Ramona not to have to do it. Owl's right. Journeys can change people. After Saul had his blinding vision, he stopped hating Christians and he changed his name to Paul. And what about that Samaritan lady? Meeting Jesus changed her life forever. And what about me? I've stopped being so boastful. I'm not sure what changed me. I could have boasted about my cooking, but it spoke for itself, really. Everyone said how tasty it was and that gave me a much bigger buzz than if I'd said it. I wonder what I should change next. <laughs> How about my socks? I done half pong. We're up in the yard, way up in the sky. We have to be going, we're saying goodbye. Ramona's here and so is right. Owl is too with Admiral the Cat. Stories you've heard, there's more to tell. Some you won't know and some you know well. Up in the yard, so much to see A journey of discovery